Hey guys, uh, welcome to this 3D World tutorial. Um, I'm Conrad and I'm going to be showing you how to create the volcano in this first video. Um, apologies if my machine chugs, I'm currently rendering the image, the final version, so um, yeah, I'm going to be bashing it. Uh, this computer is not going to not gonna like me. But uh, to start with, we can, you can, there's a number of ways that you can actually go through and create this volcano. You could create it within view, um, however you like, and then sculpt it. Or you can create it within World Machine, which is another piece of software. Uh, and you could create it entirely within World Machine, which is this bottom section here. Um, or you can combine the two. So for the purposes of this tutorial um, I've decided to combine the two and the reasons will become apparent as we go on um, but in basically uh, to put it basically using the two software you can take uh, the advantages of view and throw them into world machine and use the advantages there and uh, come out with a much better product so this is the procedural train I've I've used and I'll show you just quickly, this is part of the chugging of the machine. Um, I'll show you how to create it, but I just wanted to show you the actual OpenGL view. But um, I think my RAM is a little bit on the low side at the moment. There it is. So it's a procedural terrain. Uh, it's currently at 4096 because that's the resolution we want to export it um, at and that's that's a better view for you so I've added a tilted strata to that um, and it's very very simple just forget about these two elements um, they just uh, added, get added by view automatically um, it's just a terrain fractal with the strata here and we mainly just got the to get that angle we get we added in the degrees there so let's cancel out of that and we'll create another one next to it once it decides that uh, the mesh will be drawn so the process here is create the fractal uh, terrain in view uh, size it up to a 4k resolution and, and then translate that into a standard terrain we export the map as a 16 bit TIFF file, and we re import that into uh, World Machine using their file import options. Wow, this is really taking ages. Okay, so let's put that to the side. I'm going to throw that on a different layer and hide that layer so that it's not chugging my viewport. So over on the left, click on the procedural terrain, we just double click on it to grab this, turn off the zeroed edges so we get a nice uh, continuous terrain. I'm just going to turn up the details one before I go and edit the function. Let's arrange these vin windows here so we can see them both. We change the fractal that's there to a terrain fractal and this can be whatever you really desire um, and that's actually pretty close to what, what I'd like. Um, just to start with so we you just you really want a, a quite a noisy uh, terrain here you don't want to fixate on creating the finer details because we're going to create the shapes in world machine later and you can always come back to view later as well but uh, you'll f you'll see in a moment that uh, world machine machine really does change the style so i've added a filter uh, come down to the filter type we go to recursive strata first things first we'll add the tilt angle to 35 as we did before and you can right click on the viewport and drag it around to to see what it's uh, what it's doing and it's not really doing too much now because I think the uh, the layers are spread out way too much so so there's now you can now you can see this is two major strata layers there so I'm going to turn plateau filling up that basically fills in all the flat areas with a bit more detail and there you go it's probably a bit too rough for my liking so I'm going to turn the roughness down to so 0.59 yeah we want to get more 
more layers in there though so let's try and tweak the values so the rock hardness the layer hardness will uh, dictate the ex the strength of of uh, the lines the the strata lines and the layer thickness is uh, that that lift that it gets so that's that's the massive lift there you can see as I turned it the other way so basically uh, I mean, the different people will have different ways of explaining this my way of explaining it is the layer spacing is uh, it will affect how many layers you get within your specific terrain and the, the layer thickness is how much of a uh, drop you get within that so it's looking a little nicer not really liking how steep that is though so might actually turn the smooth edges up a bit so and I'll probably have to change around some of the details of the main fractal so I've turned up the distortion which gives us these nice waves and let's turn up the largest feature as well there we go so it's just had too many small small features I want to get some global uh, striations here and see these sweeping lines coming through through our terrain so I'm pretty happy with that um, press OK now we come up and we multiply this until it gets to 4096 just for the sake of this I'm only going to take it to 2000 because I don't fancy my chances with the amount of RAM that's currently free which is probably a lot more than, than I would have thought so I got 15 gigs is used so yeah it's not view viewers currently using a lot on that render okay so now that it's at uh, the resolution that I want um, actually to be honest you don't need to take it to 4096 you can deal with 2048 because we're going to put that into world machine and world machine then we can we can take it to 4098 and uh, sorry about that I got Skype on still so come over to the left click on this button here and click standard and this will convert this into a standard mesh once that's done it uh, looks the same we go export use the file name and I'm going to drop it into here just create a new put it in there and we're going to change the format to a TIFF file so I usually affix out my names with uh, something like view output so I know and sometimes even a one so it's right up top click on save click on 16 bits uh, that'll make it a whole crazy amount of colors and we doesn't really matter about LZW file compression uh, might as well but you want to turn off generate material maps because we have no materials and we're not interested in exporting them at this point so we press OK it does that and it will take us over to the end of Volcano and there it is there so that hasn't actually exported as 16 bits so let's go in and check out check that out might have to select a different no, oh, TGA TGA is the one that we want and so into Volcano save that I believe TGA is the one that we want now ah, here we go so this is the pop-up screen that says we can export this at 16 bits and this makes it a lot tastier so there it is a um, whole bunch of crazy colors so that's our, our job done within uh, within view at least for the time being so I'm just going to copy that address and we'll come over to world machine which is this fantastic little uh, algorithm well it's a node based software and uh, the real power comes in these erosion nodes uh, which have all sorts of amazing algorithms so come up to the generators and we're going to click on file input 
and in a moment I'll just uh, show you what these are all about but file input and this allows us to load in if we double click we load in and we can load in our procedural terrain export uh, TGA file which if it was 4k then it'll be 48 megabytes so it loads in and you can see up the top here uh, top left that it's not quite the right size for us so what we need to do is try and scale that up and you can use the quick scaling um, and it is there you go just go set from view that scales it up um, you can also change the that altitude scaling but um, I generally leave it at natural file elevations that's the most accurate in terms of cross crossing over from view to this but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter for us so if we click up here we can click either F8 or click on the 3d view button and we've got this model in here um, if we click on the yellow or green button um, it will build our terrain and create a higher resolution copy of it the yellow will just build whatever is needed for your current view the green will build everything which is why I didn't click it because it would have built all of these as well um, just to show you the comparison before we continue um, we've got I've got two uh, two terrains here and I started off by creating just a world machine uh, volcano to see what what would come out and then I decided that I did actually want the uh, the view base in there so if I show you the basic comparison I'll just do a 512 by 512 um, build of everything and I'll show you how to change the the sizes later on so that's done and this is the volcano created just inside of world machine which is pretty good um, probably just bump that up again to show you since it pretty much did it instantly last time so um, thermal weathering is one and uh, the snow uh, the snow erosion node or snow deposit node in world machine take a long time uh, that's because they're not multi-threaded by the way but, um, in a moment this will be done So what I've done here is I've just used a couple of inputs, Perl and fractals, Voronoi fractals and such, and uh, mixed them together, used a radial gradient to sink in the uh, the cone, the nose of this uh, uh, volcano, and um, and that's what you get. Now we can, we can compare that with one that, uh, no that's not for you, let's go to hide output. This is made from view as well as world machine and you can see how much more interesting it is you've got you've got nice arets that come out these these ridges that uh, creep on away from the volcano you could look at this from almost any any angle and you can find something really really cool to look at so this is the uh, the main crater that we're looking at in the actual image we're about about here and this has been sunken down just painted away inside of view. So that's what we're looking to do. And uh, simply put, we've got our file input and we're combining it with a radial gradient. So if you're wondering what these look like, just look up in the top left. Um, and that gets combined to just sync around the, the outside edges. That can, then gets combined with the negative of of this but I put a bias gain on it so basically just gone from uh, the sorry there's the radial gradient and then I've applied the bias gain to s shrink it in and the first com combiner was file input like that combined to sync the outer edges combined again to sync this uh, this whole for the crater and we can sync it right in added some noise and we just continue down the line so so let's do that again we'll go to the generator over here to radial gradient click on it drag it out and we go to combiner choose the select second one add the two let's uh, connect them up 
and we'll go into the radial grad gradient and just bring that out a bit. So now we've got a combiner, we want to just bring in, we want to subtract. Right? We probably want to average the two. I'll just go back and, and double check what I used over here. So I've used detail. That just speeds it up. You can you can experiment with uh, with the two. So what that's what this is doing. It's uh, it's using the shape of the radial gradient, and then it's adding in any detailed uh, areas of our file input. So if we drag that one up. We use another combiner here, and we'll add that in. We want a bias gain from the filters. So that's the last one. By the way, to, to get rid of a, f a filter that you've got to select, just right click with your mouse not moving and that'll fix that up. So bias gain, connect these into there. Come in and clamp that down. Gain, come back into this and we want to change this to a subtract. Or an, no, we probably want to just flip these two around that'll make it easier and now we've got we can you can see in the top left there where it's subtracting so if I go back to this view you can see it's been subtracted out there if I bring that back up as I move this it gets moved cool um, one thing that can be good to use is the grouping tool which is in the first tab just click and drag and you can give it a color and opacity and just call it new group and what that actually does is you can then see on the left here you've got a better organization and if you go into your into your view here you've got organization of that as well okay all right so the next part was to just add a, a couple more details so I've ended up going to the filter to the noise node just added that in and uh, it's just to add a little bit of detail to um, to those flat areas, just to break it all up. Now, here comes the uh, the fun part, which is the uh, natural erosion uh, nodes. This is where everything starts to look um, realistic. So I'm just going to build that up to that point and show you what it looks like. So we've got um, this nice uh, flowing over a sort of cone, cone shape with the noise applied to it and it doesn't really look very realistic at the moment so we're going to go in and add thermal weathering and just be careful with this node because it really loves to chug um, as I mentioned before so the iterations is one of the massive influences if you crank that up just expect to be waiting a long time especially at the high resolutions lower resolutions it won't be too bad so and you generally don't need more than more than 50 also the two phase while it will create better quality um, it will also slow it down slightly uh, so thermal weathering is basically weathering from expansion and contraction of uh, of water and rocks um, that's the most simple way so it's not it's not running water that's what we're going to get to next and that's the um, that's what people love the most is because it gives you those nice flowing lines um, but the thermal weathering is what's creating these here and they're called talus formations um, so it gives you these conical shapes because generally the uh, there's no water erosion or not much water erosion so they get uh, the deposits of of dirt just get deposited right at the base of wherever the erosion is uh, occurring. So there you can see the balance is smoothing off those uh, steep edges. And we can we can tweak these. Um, the rock angle is uh, basically how how steep is it before before the rock gets taken away. So how if it's if this is really flat, then you're going to get smoothing all over the terrain. And if it's really high, you probably don't get much at all. And the talus angle is also uh, sort of links into that where the talus is that cone shape at the base. 
uh, and the mass balance is how much of it is getting taken away or deposited and general strength is what it says so okay so we've done we've done that I'll just check these I'll open that up for you so I've used pretty much the the same default um, values as it comes with I'll just move these to the same one for the sake of this and I'm gonna add some more noise to it again because we've just eroded so we want to add a little bit more detail into it and let's go with additive noise yeah, I'm pretty happy with that so I'll just build that again so there's the thermal weathering going as it usually does it takes ages cool done so if we go back here we got thermal weathering and just a tiny tad tad bit more noise to add into that and now we can add our oops our natural filter which is our erosion one that we want in there and we connect these two and uh, this is this is probably the best thing to get your head around um, this node and it's really not that hard channeled erosion will create more um, grooves from from water and generally most people like that as well um, we're not going to bother about the filters um, therefore tropical versus snow environments whether whereas we're not really either um, a snow environment you'd use an inverse filter by the way it'll create more uh, sharper um, sharper erosion lines we're going to crank the base duration up as we want as much erosion as we can in this and we'll just tweak the rock hardness to be not too not too rocky not too uh, sorry solid um, basically rock hardness sets if it's at one you'll pretty much get uh, zero uh, erosion and the sediment carry is how much of the rock is actually eroded away and carried down the mountain um, that will happen with large torrents of water will for instance carry away more more of the uh, soil and sediment that gets eroded away so we're going to set this at uh, rather high we'll bring this down filter strength we're not using filter so we don't have to worry about that and the geological time enhancement is like a multiplier it uh, it runs the algorithm over uh, you know 10 times or uh, just a, a long time a long period so that can be a good one if you're not happy with uh, the amount of erosion here this will pretty much just multiply it so I'm just tweaking these values when I'm moving these I'm actually looking up in the top left here uh, to see what the effect is so channel depth is uh, only enabled because we're using channeled erosion and what I generally say is don't just crank this to, to the top because it's not it's gonna look it's not gonna look any more realistic. Leave it uh, generally in the middle and always use a tiny bit of uh, post channel erosion. At the very least, use five percent. Um, basically, that means it'll carve the the channel and then it'll erode within that channel again to uh, add a bit more um, re realism to that. Okay, so that one goes nice and quickly, and you can see this looks like crap. Uh, that's because we still have to go in and uh, adjust it. So it's uh, we've we're getting some nice uh, curvation uh, curving around here from from that fractal. Um, we've still got a lot, way too much noise through here, so we need a lot more um, a lot more erosion there. And this thing here is not looking good. This is the channeled erosion that's creating that. So we're going to turn that down. In fact, we'll just stay in this view and we'll turn this down. Let's turn the rock hardness down and the erosion. So as I turn the rock hardness down, we started getting a flat. If I show you here, 
rock hardness and as I turn it down it really flattens out so because I wanted these to be higher I'm just reducing the geological time that it's uh, applying this over to uh, keep that shape alright so that's a lot nicer we're actually getting flows of uh, of rocks that look like they've fallen down off off the uh, um, the volcano. Uh, this middle section is probably a little bit too too wide for my liking. Uh, we've lost some of the nicer details of uh, um, these ridges coming out and reaching out. So we can go in again and probably just increase that once more. Reduce this. It's a back and forward process, in fact I c you should probably reduce this to a, a value that uh, only takes a couple of seconds, but to start with um, it's sometimes good to see it in higher resolution. So this is, uh, this is all up to uh, what you desire it to look like, so I'm just going to have a look back at uh, the other options that I had because I don't want to waste your time seeing as you can just copy them anyway that seems about about there let's try that I have a feeling this will be too flat yep too flat Increase this uh, rock hardness, turn. So let's just turn that down. See how that goes. Oh, I'll just leave it at this point anyway. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm still keeping a lot of the uh, the details. We've got some of the ridges coming out here. I would still like to see more of that. Uh, curve that we get going in uh, in this one but uh, it'll do for now so that's pretty much uh, the volcano done um, you've created it and you can pretty much just output it from there um, the only thing next that we're going to do and you, you, this isn't necessarily the uh, the most effective or efficient way to to get it but um, to, to get a map for where the, where the lava will be, um, I'm going to use all these bias gains and selectors to to extract basically uh, this this thing which hasn't been built. So here it is. So this is a map based on uh, slope and height of uh, of the terrain. So what we do is just extend this out. And we'll come into the selectors, and we've got a whole bunch of uh, different ones. Convexity is basically um, how extreme the the angle is at any point. So this is great for selecting out creeks, and you can see why. You can see these nice grey areas. If you took this into Photoshop and did a selection just on that colour, you'd be able to get a really nice map of this middle lava area. In fact, I suggest you do that. I suggest you just forget about what I'm about to show you. Um, because uh, it's not really the most effective. But this is the area that I'm trying to select. So, we've got our select convexity. And go to... Let's see how we want to do this. We use a bias gain into there, and this should allow us to to white out that area that of, of the uh, the middle of the of the volcano. So we've selected that, and now we can clamp it. If I can remember where the clamp is, it's there. So we're going to clamp the values so that we uh, really just restrict 
you want clip. Let's try a couple of different things here that can can be done. So. See what this one's doing. Okay, I'm gonna. I think I've set this up. Yeah, there we go. I wanna. Wanna let a lower value on this on the convexity. And let me just go like that. Let's put this to. Let's put it to the black values, and then to clamp them. Let's see if the clamp will work now. Still wanting to just modify all the values, and I don't want that. There we go, that one's working. There we go. So I can move the black areas out to just fill in the black area. And let's see how that's going now. Okay, so I've got this nice black area in the middle that I, that I uh, was aiming for. Now what we'll do is we, we're going to use the selectors again and select the height and we also want a slope selector and we're going to come in and we're going to mask out this based on the height and the slope so come to here and you want to select just that top portion but not the very top we just want about there, turn the fall up down so we can really see where we're selecting. See how we're getting that nice circle in the center there? So we're going to use that and we're going to plug that into the slope selector and then attach that and then we'll crank the slope selector down. So what we've done is we've selected the, the white areas on our terrain which are at a certain altitude we're selecting a certain height so we've got that ring around there the reason we uh, want that is we want this middle circle and then we're plugging this into the mask of a select slope so if I just disable that you can see I've selected slopes which are flatter so I'm getting rid of these uh, steep areas which come up to the, uh, the volcanoes crater so when I go to mask that out select that and we've got a uh, good nice area in the middle here in fact we probably don't even need um, this area here but I'm just gonna go in and mask it see if it even worked which it uh, seems it didn't but um, maybe it maybe it need to be inverted but uh, nevertheless we we can actually use the oh that's how we do it we use the clamp there to uh, to link it back in so we get rid of this set of laps in my process there so we're using the area that we've already selected and then selecting a height based on that but uh, for this case I'm just going to get rid of these original ones and just use the select slope which is here but you know you could have just uh, gone into Photoshop and painted that in as I mentioned so finally our output uh, we want a bitmap output for the sorry no we don't we want first first of all we want a height output for our primary terrain and you could use a bitmap output or you can use a height output for for the select slope I think gut feeling yeah the bitmap even though you want it as bitmap it won't connect to a, uh, a height map data because this is essentially height map data but we can output it as just a uh, BMP and set it to Let's go up to the folder I was in, Volcano, let's, let's call it um, Lava Map Output, Bitmap.
map will do and for the height map we want a uh, Povre TGA or a TIFF but I, I just tend to use the TGAs because they uh, they've always worked for me so let's go WM output is this okay let's write the output to the disk it'll have to build the terrain so at this point you want to you don't want to end up with a terrain this big you want a terrain that's as that's your 4k as high resolution as you can as your machine can deal with so some people will be 2k some 1k it really also depends on the distance away from the camera but uh, view tends to handle the uh, the high re the high res assets pretty well so if you want to change your resolution and you don't know how up the top left click on this you've got your resolution there you want to untick the uh, plus one as well that's for programs that use a plus one on their um, resolution like Terrigen we don't need that alright so that's pretty much it we're gonna go back into view and with our converted terrain which is now a standard terrain I'm gonna double click on it and uh, hopefully you saved your procedural um, version before converting it to a standard one because uh, you can't convert them back the other way so once we've got this we can just click on flatten um, you don't need to but uh, I just do anyway and we're going to click on the, p the portrait picture we're going to load up an image and we're going to go to our volcano and we want the world machine output it's okay make sure the proportions are at a hundred percent and even though it looks skewed and ultra tall that's uh, that's fine we can scale that in and it doesn't even matter anyway because it comes in at about half that scale anyway so we press ok and there we go it's pretty much that's our terrain and uh, easy as that and honestly if you don't have world machine well if you don't have world machine you probably haven't continued watching but it's something like $195 or $150 US it's really really worth it if you're doing terrains and uh, you want something you want to really take them to the next level so that's it for this uh, part of the tutorial um, we'll come back and we'll start uh, working on the materials and uh, populating the terrain and getting the composition right.